I got to start this video off by saying I'm sorry. I missed getting video footage of me taking the fruit, putting it into the bag, and mixing the ingredients. But that's all I did here. That's all that's missing. The rest of it, I did get video footage of. I don't know, it just slipped my mind. But it's still a useful recipe, and the wine did turn out. So for those of you that have apples and plums in the yard, or you'd like to try this wine, this recipe will still work for you. It's kind of adapted a little bit loosely on a plum recipe that I found online and uh, a different fruit, fruit recipe that I found online. So day number one, all you're going to do is take the plums, the apple sugar, camera tablets, uh, yeast nutrient acid blood, and the wine tannin, and also the pectic enzyme, and that's all going to go into your primary. The fruit all goes into a bag, and what I'm using here is actually just a paint strainer bag. You can pick them up on Amazon. They're super cheap and they do last for quite a while. They're a bit of a pain to clean, but uh, it saves you some work later on in getting that sediment off in the primary. Uh, links down below. Once you've got that all in there, uh, crush your Camden tablets. That's the only thing that uh, I probably didn't specify. Mix it all up, close it up, and leave it for at least 24 hours before we pitch the yeast. On day number two, we're going to take and uh, pitch the yeast, and that's about it. Now, I really made an error here in day number three, and that was to take and push down the bag or stir. I should have just left this thing alone. Lesson learned, after you pitch the yeast, just leave it alone, take a look at it to see what it's doing, but don't agitate it until your yeast is established. You can kind of see in the top left, it looks like the yeast is going and I could smell it and hindsight's always 2020. If I would have left it alone, I think it would have been okay but it ended up this fermentation never started here. So a few days later, I ended up actually making another yeast starter, pitching a fresh packet of yeast, but I did it inside of a starter with uh, some nutrient and some brown sugar. The whole video is over here, but this is briefly uh, kind of what I did to put that together left it sit for, uh, it wasn't really long, 30 minutes or so, added that into my primary, and it didn't take, uh, I think it was 24, maybe 30 hours, and my bubbler was going, and I was relieved because I figured I might have to just pitch this whole batch, lose all the fruit, the sugar, and the other stuff that you put into it. So I did manage to get it going, and it might help, this video might just help somebody else who's struggling with kind of the same thing. Don't give up on the wine, kind of just reevaluate what you did. And it's really handy for me actually making the YouTube video because I have all the video footage. So if I don't remember exactly what I did, I have a spreadsheet I can go to and I can also pull back the video and fix the problems. All right, so now that fermentation is going every day, all you want to do is just pop the lid off, take that fruit bag, punch it down, give it a little bit of a stir, and uh, close it back up and let it just keep going. Now on day number 13, this is a bit more of a gut hunch for me to kind of pull that fruit bag out. Looking at the fruit now in the video, I could have probably left it here for maybe like another day or two. But fermentation had already really slowed down and I didn't want anything to go stale or rancid because I had quite that, that quite a long delay at the start getting the fermentation going. So I felt it was time to pull out the fruit bag and that's what I did. I just uh, sanitized the berries out of my hands, really washed them really well. And uh, then I just took the fruit bag, lifted it up, squeezed out as much juice as I possibly could get out of this thing and closed it back up. Actually, I did give it a stir here before I closed it back up. The other reason I kind of did this too is I wanted the sediment inside the primary to kind of settle down and this way I don't have to stir it or punch that fruit bag down every day. It lets that sediment settle in 
and for me to get a cleaner product into the secondary, I guess, was kind of what my thinking was. All right, with uh, day number 15 rolling around here, there was almost no activity left in the bubbler. And I measured the specific gravity, and you can clearly see that the fermentation or the primary is done. So I took and mixed up uh, my bentonite, got that ready in a jar. Uh, it's going to be my clearing agent. One tablespoon of that in the water. And mixing this kind of beforehand too gives you a little bit of a chance for this uh, solution to really uh, liquefy, for lack of a better term. I just kind of give it a shake and keep that going while I'm racking off the primary into the secondary. And by the time you've got this all done and everything is clean, sanitized, and getting everything together, that jar sat there for a good 30 minutes and I feel like that bentonite solution is pretty good. I feel like I did a pretty good job of racking this one off into the secondary. It looked like I could have got maybe a little bit more wine out of it, but I didn't want to get too much schmutz into my secondary. So whatever, we'll call it good for this time around. And uh, at this point in time, the carboy is pretty close to full. So I just added my bentonite solution, gave it a really good long stir here to make sure it's all degassed as best I could. And this is something I didn't feel great about. I did top this thing off with water. I don't know if I'll ever do that again. I might just make a very neutral flavored wine, uh, literally a carboy of it or a couple of gallons. And I'm gonna use that to top up, I think in the future. You know, what's kind of funny. You figure you've degassed the wine all the way. I definitely didn't do so in this case. Like literally about an hour later, I noticed the bubbler was going off again. And I went upstairs to check and this is what I've seen. The wine was already starting to clear, but the bubbler's already, but the bubbler's going nuts. So I ended up stirring it like crazy again until I got this thing totally degassed for the second time. Not sure what was going on there. Maybe it's because I added the water Whatever, you can give me feedback if you guys know what's happening here. I just figured I'd better degas it all the way. So day number 16, I couldn't believe how much sediment had already settled down in this wine. So I figured it was time to re-rack it. Hindsight's always 2020. I'm learning as I go. Clearly, I could have left this. It's fine lees. It's not grow lees or gross lees, however it's pronounced. Probably grow lees. It's French, whatever. Anyway, I re-racked it, so that's what I'm showing you in the video. I'm not trying to pretend that I'm the perfect winemaker. I'm learning and watching the video again of how I made a wine start to finish. Uh, it's really just telling me I need to be more patient. I should have left this alone. Lesson learned. Hopefully for next time, I guess we'll find out. Okay, so it's day number 27 at this point in time. There's uh, quite a few things to do today. I'm going to end up uh, sweetening this wine. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to need to stabilize it. Uh, might as well get the sugar dissolved. I'm just using a kettle and five cups of sugar. And I'm trying to use as little as possible water because I've already put a ton of water and uh, other stuff into this wine. Looking back on the video, uh, there's so many things I would change. Whatever. Uh, Re-rack this thing before I add any of this stuff back into it. As soon as she's racked off, I go ahead and add the uh, cabinet tablets go in first. Then the potassium sorbate is going to go in. And once I've got that in there, then I can go ahead and put the sugar in. I did forget uh, the hydrometer reading or to record the hydrometer reading. So I just took another one here to record on my wine sheet spreadsheet to make sure I had that measurement. Lots of suds on the top of this one. Uh, almost a little bit alarming to see how much that star sand foams up, but it's supposed to break down immediately. Uh, so I'm trusting the manufacturer here. After each step of adding the cabinet tablets, potassium sorbate, etc., I am making sure that I do take the time to give this uh, wine carboy a good stir, make sure that's all diluted before I'm adding uh, any more stuff to it. I do add, also add the uh, Kisasol here, gave that a stir in, 
And uh, the next day, uh, not sure, I think my camera battery died. I did take the video, but I don't have the footage for it. But I just added the Cheeto stand and gave that a stir to hopefully get the remaining uh, kind of haze out of the wine. So on day 31, I had a good chunk of sediment had settled out of it, but uh, there's still quite a bit of stuff in the solution. After quite a bit of researching online, I came to the conclusion that it was pectic haze. I could have tested for it, I guess, uh, but a lot of the feedback was there's no harm in adding the pectic enzyme. So I did put a tablespoon of pectic enzyme in and I gave that a good stir in. I also remembered that I had a batch of plum wine from my first ever batch of plum wine uh, sitting and just letting it clear on its own naturally which had settled out pretty well as you can see and it's got quite a different color it's plum only very base ingredients on it but it's very compatible and because i was tired of topping up even at this point i knew i was tired of topping up and putting other stuff into there i topped it up with this wine which ended up being the perfect amount it's in a one gallon carboy but i only ended up using uh put three liters of it the bottom was all sediment Unfortunately, I don't have any video of how much sediment was actually it had settled out naturally all on its own without any clearing agents at all. So that's what went into uh, this plum wine as well. Day 42. Always remember the day prior to doing any racking to put it on the counter just to help your little schmutz that you stir up kind of fall back down or settle back down. This one is just a re-rack. As you can see, this wine cleared up really nice, finally. It took some time, took some, uh, I'm not going to say patience. I think it's more luck than patience on my part. But there's quite a bit of stuff that kind of floated down to the bottom. And it did settle out really nice. It looks really lovely. I racked it off here and managed to get just about everything kind of uh, off the bottom. Very little waste. Day number 44, so after I've let the bottle just, uh, or the carboy just sit for another two days, I'm just impressed with how clear, I mean, wine looks so good when it's ready to bottle, doesn't it? This bottling is done uh, totally by myself here, so the key to doing this and not feeling like you're super rushed is kind of laying everything out and having everything set up and kind of make a workstation, corks nearby, bottles all clean, just everything needs to be within like an arm's reach or uh, a bit better than that. And then it's actually quite relaxing. I don't mind doing this uh, at all myself. It is nice to have an extra set of hands, but you know what? If the uh, life boss is at work, nothing quite cheers up uh, the boss when she comes home than a nice glass of fresh wine waiting for her. <laughs> She's going to kill me when she hears it. I'm quite impressed with how clean the wine turned out to be. And like I said, it's quite relaxing. Just enjoying this, I'm very happy that this wine turned out as well as it did. As far as clarity goes, I mean, I haven't tasted it at this point, but uh, the smell that it's given off or the aroma, it smells like it's gonna be a gooder. Yes, I admit, I've got a drinking problem. I don't, I promise you, I don't, but uh, it may look like it from all the videos I'm making here. <laughs> I know, don't quit my day job, right? Really impressed with how the bottles all look after I'm totally done making it here. And you definitely don't have to throw the caps on. I do like to cap them. So I'm gonna cap all the wine. It doesn't take that long to do. The boiling water does a great job of sealing these things up. I had a bunch of just leftover caps from previous batches, so I ended up just using them on my made wine. And whatever you do, don't waste the wine at the bottom of the carboy. Yes, there's gonna be some sediment at the bottom of it, but just let it settle out and it'll give you a chance to taste what you've been working so hard towards. And for the apple plum, and you can see this is the bottom of the carboy. There is a little bit of sediment in here, but that's okay. I don't mind. I want to give it a quick taste before it goes into 
aging and see what it's like. Mm, it's a uh, very pleasant uh, aroma. Very sharp at the tail end of it, but it's got a nice flavor actually, a really nice. This one will need longer to age, but I think this is going to end up turning out to be like a very nice evening sipping wine. My first experimentation with a different yeast as well, so quite happy that that turned out as well as it did. Uh, glad I got it cleared too. I had quite a bit of trouble clearing this wine, but uh, it seems to be worth it. I can't get over the smell. The aroma is just really, smells really good. Can't quite put my finger on something in there. Anyway, pretty happy with both of these. Both of them turned out. One is from scratch and one is a fruit wine that I made myself. And uh, the other wine that I was just uh, bottling at the same time here is a Kit uh, RGS Lemonade. And both turned out, both are gonna be drinkable and enjoyable.